So, I apologize that this circle over here is not especially circular. It's not my best work. Uh, but I had to do my best because I need these circles to touch. Now, we're going to prove a property about these. Do you remember though, do you remember what was our definition for what is it, what makes circles touch at exactly one point? I gave you a really technical, fancy definition for it. Does anyone remember? It had to do with tangents. Now, I just want you to store that in the back of your mind. See if you can remember it. We'll come back to it in a second. Can you take those two centers which you've uh, actually drawn in and go ahead and join up the two centers. Can you do that? Join up the two centers. Okay, so these two centers here, I'm going to call them X and Y. When you join them up, you should notice that the interval XY seems to pass directly through that spot where they touch. Do you notice that? If you actually drew a <laughs> proper circles, how are you going? Yeah, you okay? If you actually drew proper circles, you should find, oh, if we give this guy a name, what would you like to call this point of contact? I don't like it. I'll tell you why. Sorry, just before we move on. Um, I'm going to resist calling it O because it doesn't seem to be the center of a circle at the moment. Uh, I'm probably going to avoid calling it Z as well because when you say like say ABCD or PQRS um, or XYZ, you're probably trying to pick out three or four features that are all the same kind of feature, like you know PQRS that are all concyclic or PQRS that are all you know that kind of thing. This point seems to be different from the others, right? Um, K, that'll do. K. So, X, K, Y seems to be a straight line. X, K, Y seems to be a straight line. Okay. Now, my question to you is, if it is a straight line, how can we prove that that is the case? Okay. Now, I want you to jot down on the side here, a straight line. And I actually want you to think for a moment and brainstorm with the people next to you because you're used to being told that something is a straight line and then using that to um, prove other kinds of properties, right? But what you don't see very often is you don't know whether something is a straight line and your job is to prove that it is. So I'm going to give you a minute or two to brainstorm with the person next to you or the people around you. What are the things you know about straight lines? What properties do you know? And can any of them be used in reverse. Have a think about it together before you shout out. I want you to have some time to think. Okay, off you go. I gave you a second. I gave you more than a second. What properties do we know about straight lines that we can use here? Any suggestions? Okay, so by definition, a straight line is, um, is two points joined together. But what we have is this third point. And we're, so we're kind of trying to say that these two points and these two points they end up forming one big line, right? Okay, so we'll keep that in the back of our heads. What else could you tell me about straight lines? Yep. Either of you fine. Yep. Okay, what about 180 degrees? The angle sum of a straight line, because a straight line can be thought of as an angle, right? The angle sum of all the angles on there is 180 degrees. Okay, good. What else can you tell me? What else? That's okay, thank you. Is there really nothing else? Come on, you know lots of things about straight lines. What does straight mean? What makes, for example, what makes this straight and not this straight? How could you describe this? Hmm. <laughs> you know in the dictionary where it's like, what is a line? It's an yeah. object that is linear. What is linear? Adjective, describing a line. You're like, okay, this is not helpful. Um, maybe it might help if, for example, I put things like this on here and compare this, which is a straight line, with this, which is not. If I said to you, okay, let's, oops, sorry, that's an X. If I put this over the top, what language can you use to, yeah? The gradient is constant. Ooh, okay, that's fancy, isn't it? So. When you have a look at this guy, right? Well, you know what gradient is? Gradient is a measure of what? It's a measure of steepness, slope, right? So you're like, okay, if I measure anywhere along here, like say, uh, 
rise over run. You have a look at that rise over run. On this straight line, that rise over run should be the same as this rise over run, or this rise over this run. They should all be the same, right? Which is something quite markably different over here. Uh, this rise over this run is different to this rise over this run. And everywhere you go, you get a different gradient, right? So how could you describe what's going on here? How could you? Hmm. Yeah, what do you reckon? Ah, okay. So wait, where's the angle you're describing? What are you talking about? Between what and what? Uh, X and K. So this angle here, X and K, I need three points for an angle, right? Like a, I need like an A and a B and a C. So where's the angle you're referring to? What am I going to form the angle with? So X and K. So x and k can be two points, but I need a third point for an angle. Why? So like, if I drew it like this, I'm trying to prove that that angle there is actually zero. Is that the idea? I, I see what you're getting at. It's like, uh, I, maybe it's the other way around. I think x is the end, isn't it? Like k, x, y, like that sort of thing. Maybe I'll swap those around. Uh, that, that would sort of work. We actually did, we played a trick like that with getting an angle towards zero. If you remember when I proved, we proved this guy. Do you remember this? That the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. We actually did exactly what Raj is suggesting. We took this diagram, which is not a tangent, but a, what's this guy called? Secant. It's a secant, because it, it cuts, right? So we said, hey, hey look, if you take this secant and you move it over, to become a tangent, like so, then this angle in here, it actually narrows in, right? It narrows in, and then eventually it's so narrow, it becomes zero, like we're talking about. But that is quite hard to conceptually work with, isn't it? Um, circles, we know how to represent circles on Cartesian planes, don't we? How do you represent a circle? You guys have done this in the graphs topic. This is like last, last month or so. How do you represent a circle on the Cartesian plane. You could use an equation, can't you? What kind of equation could you use? Yeah, you could, for instance, yeah, x squared plus y squared, right? Equals, yeah, the radius squared. That would be a circle with its center at the origin, right? Um, how would you move that around? Because these circles both don't have the same center. There's a, there's this circle is going to have its center somewhere else. So how would I shift it over? Yeah, you do something like this, like x minus whatever, and y minus whatever equals some different radius. Okay, so you could do some work with those, right? That does seem a little complicated though, right? It seems like um, bringing a bomb to a water fight or something like that. So can we use the facts that we already know? For example, you've given me this. Has anyone got an idea how we could use that fact to prove that x, k, y is a straight line? Or that x, k, y x, k, and y are collinear. Any suggestions? What do you reckon, Jasmine? Does anyone want to construct anything? Any ideas for construction you might be useful? Okay, so I gave you this clue right at the beginning. I said, do you remember our definition for circles that just touch is that they share a tangent at their point of contact, right? So if they share a tangent, I should be able to draw a tangent at k, and it's a tangent to both circles. Can you do that for me? Grab your ruler out if you haven't already. Like so. So this guy is the common tangent. Let's call this tangent, let's give it a name. Let's call it something like say A, B. So now everything here is named. What can you tell me about some of the angles that we've now created by putting this tangent in place? What can you tell me? Okay, so, so from over here, right, I know, well, name an angle for me that's 90 degrees and give me the reason why. Angle A, sorry? A, K, Y, so that's uh, this guy over here. You're suggesting that's 90 degrees and the reason is the tangent is Perpendicular to what? What is it perpendicular to? What's, what is KY? 
It's the radius. It's not just any radius though. Like I've got all these infinite radii here I haven't drawn. What's special about this one? It's at the point of contact, right? The radius at the point of contact. The tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So it can be any radius. At the point of contact, okay? Because, yeah, as we just pointed out, there's lots of radii here that I could draw up, down, left, right, but it's only perpendicular to that specific one. Okay, well that's nice. Where do you want me to go with this? Ah, so I could say similarly, because it's actually exactly the same reason I'm going to use, just in a different circle. Similarly, uh, akx is also equal to 90 degrees. So now we can use this fact, right? We didn't know that it was a straight line before, but now I can say, therefore, angle aky plus angle akx is 180 degrees, right, from these two facts here. But this angle here, this is two adjacent angles, right? So if they're adjacent, then they add up to this angle here, x, k, y. That is literally the two angles that make up this one. So that's 180, which makes this a straight angle. It's a straight line. Okay? Therefore, x, k, and y are collinear. And the reason is that the angle sum of a straight line is 180. So it's kind of nice. We're not used to um, using these facts in reverse. We're using the converse is what we would say this. Um, but this is a classic example of knowing facts, but just not, not, not being used to using them in a, in a sort of different orientation. That's a key mathematical skill.